So uh, on Monday at LinuxCon, we introduced one more piece of plumbing called Infricate, and I won't steal their thunder, but it has to do with infrastructure management and making swarms self-managing and self-healing. It's pretty awesome. Uh, and so please welcome Dave Chung and Bill Warner, I guess. Bill is here, Dave is here. All right, take it away. Making it, making it look unorganized on purpose. We, we clearly practiced. Uh, um, actually, the, the Linux con announcement was Tuesday, so, um, and this is my third talk in four days. So, uh, it's a little rough. Uh, so, we weren't really quite expecting the kind of reception that the community has given us. Uh, I think we so far had uh, on GitHub, um, we had over 700 stars in the last couple of days, um, over 50 forks or something like that. So um, it's it's great. It's 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 really. I think that's precisely the reason why we want to bring it out in the open uh, sooner than later, because we want to get people involved and and start kicking the tires and telling us what we're not doing right and and what are some of the ideas that we can implement. So, anyways, um, let's get into it. The, the basic problem that we're trying to solve is that managing Docker on different platforms, um, and especially you know, different infrastructure, is really a difficult problem. And it's also something that's not very portable. Um, you have very different user experiences in terms of setting things up, uh, whether you're on Mac or you're on um, AWS. And that's a big problem. We want to fix that, because the whole point of Docker is to have a common experience, regardless of the underlying infrastructure that you're running on. And how do we really see this, really, really you know, find out firsthand this problem was when we were starting to build out um, the different editions of Docker. So there were, you know, many of you, I'm sure, have used uh, Docker for Mac. Um, and some of you may have even tried the Docker for AWS and Docker for um, Azure editions. So Docker for Mac is really an amazing product because you know, it just works, right? It runs on your laptop, it runs on your Mac, everything runs smoothly. And one of the really best um, features about it is that it, it, it's able to do self-updates. So if you take that problem and then you move it onto the bigger infrastructure like AWS, well, so now you have a cluster. <laughs> how do we do updates on that? And how do we do it in the same way? Um, so that's, that's the kind of problem that we really, really ended up trying to solve. And so let me jump into the Docker for AWS architecture a little bit. Um, so Docker for AWS has a lot of moving parts um, because it's inherently uh, a, a distributed system that you have running in the cloud. Um, for that, we had to do a lot of integration, um, a lot of work around building out provisioning VPCs, setting up EC2 instances, setting up the proper IM roles on AWS, hooking that into CloudFormation, and then really kind of offer all that infrastructure management functionality as a, pretty much a separate subsystem. And this is special in, a, in that you really have to have all this working before you can get the container runtime ready to start you know, providing services to, your, to the end, end user. So it's in this sort of a funny place. And after a while, we realized we've done enough work that that itself is, represents quite a bit of effort that we think should be you know, packaged together as some, you know, maybe a set of useful tools that we can share with the community at large. And that became the infra, what, what we call today InfraKit. So what's InfraKit? InfraKit is a toolkit for building declarative, self-healing infrastructure if that, you know, if I were to give a one-line summary of that. And, well, that's drilled in. What's declarative? Well, declarative, for obvious reasons, a lot of projects have this as well, is that we rely on a JSON configuration file to, for the user to describe the desired infrastructure state. So, 
through this configuration file, you're specifying things such as the type of VM images that you're using, the type of the instances, um, the sort of volumes that you might have, to some of the more higher level um, properties such as how big your groups are. Or maybe there's something special about these, you know, the members in this group. What could be their logical identifiers? Maybe their special IP addresses, whatnot. So all this is specified in a, in a JSON configuration file. And the way we design the JSON schema is it's really kind of schemaless, but follow some basic design patterns where we al allow you to really try to do two things. Encapsulating some of the platform specific details and try to treat them as opaque block, uh, you know, black boxes that you can manipulate as a group and then be able to compose that into other parts of the JSON. So we try to encourage both encapsulation and composition. And finally, this config is an input to all of the operations that you do with the system because at the end of the day, the whole point is you put it in a file what you would like your infrastructure to look like and the system should figure out what needs to be done to make that converge to your desired states. So how is this self-healing? Um, in contrast to a lot of the more um, traditional um, configuration management tools, this system is really a comprised of a whole network of sets of um, active components, where they're, they're basically processes that are continuously monitoring your infrastructure state. And it's able to detect any kind of state divergence. And based on the state divergence, um, it, des it decides on the necessary actions to take. So it's continuously mo monitoring and reconciling the actual state of your infrastructure against the, the specification the, that you have. And furthermore, back to what, we said er what I said earlier about updates, well, we want to make updating the Docker engine software, for example, when you have a new version of Docker engine, you, when you want to roll it out to a new cluster, well, we want that process to be seamless and safe and still keep your services up and running. So the only way to do that is to implement rolling updates. And that is something that also takes a bit of work, but that is really private, the, some of the primary reasons for InfraKit. But most important part of it is that, the most part, important part about InfraKit is that it's first and foremost a toolkit. Um, it's, it's really meant for something that our users, um, our developers that can take advantage of this toolkit and maybe leverage some of the primitives that it provides and incorporate th that into their own applications. So for that, we provide several um, primitives for managing collection of resources. We allow you to create, destroy, scale resources and perform rolling updates. And we provide really like the basic abstractions uh, in terms of how to mod, you know, what exactly it is, what, do, what does it mean to work with a group of resources and what are the operations for groups. And then also what we have called what we call instances. Instances are you know, a me mechanism that allows you to, do this, to actually describe the underlying physical resource that, you're, that, make up to, that make up the members of the group that you care about. And then we have this notion of flavor. Flavor essentially gives you sort of that additional semantics that's beyond mere presence um, of a physical resource. It actually gives you some application level meaning. So you can think of it in terms of, you know, what does it mean to do something on top of an AWS EC2 instance, but also now in terms of health, you know, checking for health of this particular resource, you can incorporate additional meaning such as, um, is this node also now a member of the swarm? Has it joined successfully? In addition to the fact that we know it's, it's alive, or AWS says it's, you have this instance. So as a toolkit, um, what we have open source on Tuesday um, contains a collection of executable and active components. And they're all written in Go. Um, and in our, within this project, we call them plugins. Uh, and, and really, plugins are just a, you know, an active running Go daemon process that you can build pretty quickly. Once you check out the repo, you can build it, and you can run them. And 
And that's pretty much it. They start working, they, they're, they're able to discover each other and start working together to really fulfill their purpose. And the idea for, that, for us is that when we start integrating that into the Docker engine in the future, is to actually simplify all that even further by taking advantage of the plugins framework that's being talked about in, that's actually coming out of experimental, I believe, in 113. So that's a great architecture that we would love to leverage uh, to actually fully implement the plugins within for, inf for InfraKit. So then by that time, those will be full on run C containers from a technical perspective. So here's a picture of what InfraKit might look like uh, when deployed in the context of a Docker swarm. So you can take, a, and this, in this case, you can see that the, the biggest block over here, um, we actually have one, two, and three groups that are under management by InfraKit right now. And the most obvious and simple one is this one here we call cattle. And all the members in the cattle group uh, are pretty much identical. I mean, they're pretty much fungible um, resources. No one instance is any different than the other. And that represents a pretty much standard pattern that you have seen out on the infrastructure providers such as AWS in terms of auto scaling groups or the scale sets um, Azure. So this models that pretty, pretty much. Um, and the second group here gets a little bit more interesting right now is, is what we call pets. Um, Pets have the notion of, um, pets is a kind of group where the members themselves, individual, me individual members, have their own identity. So you can think of it as, a, you know, it has its own I assigned IP address. Um, and the members can also have some sort of stable storage so that um, it can have some state. If, you know, it can have the state. So you can think of a, a, a good example of pets would be, say, a zookeeper cluster, a MySQL cluster. And then finally, the third group, and that group is actually also, is, um, is actually quite interesting, is this third group here are actually the infrakit themselves. So the, the toolkit, the system is designed to be self-managing and by leveraging what, uh, a lot of the features and capabilities in the swarm kit, the InfraKit is able to go through the kind of, um, go through to offer you the kind of functionality such as you know, having two hot standbys and one leader so that at any given time, only one set of the infinite plugins is actively monitoring and, and, and reconciling the state of your infrastructure. But if anything happens to the leader node, for example, then you can have the failover because one, the other nodes, well, one of them will become a leader and the whole process continues. The, the InfraKit itself decide, you know, to reconcile the fact that it needs to start up a whole new set to complete the full quorum. So you have the, you have the system in this case actually self-managing. And in fact, it is actually possible to bootstrap the whole system by itself starting out with just one node. So you can start out with one node, and that one node effectively will blossom, and we call it a seed, effectively just grow into the full swarm. And this shows you kind of a, this shows you a, a, kind of a pictorial overview of what a typical configuration might look like. So as I mentioned earlier, the JSON schema really tries to encourage encapsulation so we allow you to specify, you'll see patterns throughout the, throughout the project where you see um, s fragments like some, a, a JSON field called properties and then followed by some raw configuration. And you can, you'll see that being reused throughout the configuration. And one good example is that a group plugin really works with two um, additional plugins. One is called instance and the other one's called flavor. So by composing the configuration for instance and a flavor, you can actually make up the configuration for a group pretty easily. And as that example up there, you'll see that the instance, we happen to be using a Vagrant plugin that's available out of box as part of the repo. And also, 
this is really for setting up a Zookeeper um, cluster with one, two, three IP addresses that are fully specified in the flavor plugin itself. So it's this mix and match of instance and flavors that allow you to compose and define the characteristics of the group of resources that you're trying to manage. And just kind of give you an idea in terms of the, what you might find the repo, um, right now in terms of instances, uh, we, have, um, we have Vagrant, and we have a very simple one that writes to the file, um, writes provisions a, a flat file on disk so that you can kind of you know, start playing with things without having to sign up for AWS, for example. Uh, we have, like I said, Vagrant, but we also have a, a, a proof of concept. Oops. We also have a proof of concept that works with Terraform. So that, that we want to prove the point that one of the things that are special about InfraKit is that it, start, it, it not only works with traditional tools like Terraform, um, but it actually brings about, it actually augments it by bringing in the, the ability to actively manage your environment. And then you have flavor. The flavor plugins, plugins you can find them in the repo. Um, there are the ones for Zookeeper, for Docker Swarm, and we also have one just called Vanilla, because um, it's just plain. It doesn't really do anything, but it's really easy for you to kind of see, to put them all together and see the inter learn about the interaction between these um, plugins. So this is a typical configuration file that you would put together, and then once you have the file, what would you do with it? So out of the box right now, all the Plugins are implemented as, as daemons. So you just simply start them up um, after you run the build. And in this case, I'm starting up the group plugin, I'm starting up the Zookeeper flavor, and I'm starting up a, um, a Vagrant plugin for my laptop. And then after that, I simply just tell InfraKit and say, watch it. And this, that's pretty much it. You, after given that configuration, that we have earlier that shows, you know, I'm trying to, I should have a Zookeeper cluster of three nodes, and these are the IP addresses they should have. You just tell InfraGroup, you just tell InfraKit to start watching that, and InfraKit figures out what needs to be done. So if, if the fact that there aren't, you know, aren't any nodes available, I mean, there aren't any nodes running as a Zookeeper, as a Zookeeper ensemble, it simply creates that. And then after that, it starts the, the monitoring and the reconciliation loop continuously to make sure that th the state remains what you have specified before. So now you decide to do something, you decide to actually change it. Maybe change the instance type, maybe some configuration about one of the instances, maybe upgrade the Zookeeper uh, software. Then you, you, know, you want to make an update. So you can tell InfraKit, you can tell InfraKit to just give you, a, you know, kind of do a describe update. Effectively, give me a plan about what you're about to do. And once you're okay with that, simply do a update, and things starts rolling. So, so that gives you an idea. And and Bill, uh, Bill will come up in a second to actually kind of go through an, an actual live demo, so you can get a better sense of what that looks like. But what do we have today? Um, it's pretty raw. I, I have to admit that it's, it's very early on. We literally just started the project not very long ago. We, we have done a lot of work, but we want to get it out in the open right away so that we can get the community to participate with us so we can all build this out in the open. And we have big plans. We want to eventually um, bring this all together and build out a cohesive framework for the active management of infrastructure. So, and Docker is really, Docker engine is really an ideal place, an ideal platform for doing this. Um, but we have an opportunity here to really bring this, this cohesive framework that can manage not only physical resources, virtual, but container-based as well. So you can see this thing going, you know, the direction that we're taking is that within the InfraKit um, framework, if you will, we can now start managing not only physical resources, but also like container overlay networks. Um, so just really the entire stack. And that's what we think is going to be really, really um, great for our users because now we're 
getting a complete solution for regardless of the platform that they're running, and they will just have this seamless, consistent Docker user experience. So how can you get involved? Um, we really need a lot of help in terms of defining and implementing new plugins. Uh, we're also interested in what are some of the new group management strategies. Maybe we can do something about you know, metrics, application performance driven, metrics driven, auto scaling. What does that look like? And, um, and what about different kinds of new types of resources? Um, networks, storage. Um, so there are really, a, and also maybe low balancers, layer four, layer seven. So there's a lot of pieces that are still out there that we really need to define. And we're looking for your help, and we would love to hear from you guys. Um, so I think now I'm going to have Bill come up and uh, do a brief demo. Thanks. Hello. So you can imagine my terror as the room started to fill and the Wi-Fi came to a grinding halt. <laughs> so this might be a, a more uh, eventful demo than one would hope for. Is there Ethernet? Yeah, MacBook Pro. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if we can turn up an, ad an adapter, I can uh, work in the meantime. Live demo, what could go wrong, right? So I'll, I'll try to make this interesting at any rate. Uh, here we go. Thank you, Steve. So this is fun, because now I actually get to perform surgery. So uh, I'll try to talk and type at the same time. So basically, uh, what I want to do here is give you a sort of practical example of using InfraKit. And uh, to do that, I'm going to demonstrate how you might configure InfraKit to set up a ZooKeeper ensemble. Um, has anybody in the audience set up ZooKeeper before in clustered mode? OK, good. So you might be a little bit uh, familiar with some of the configuration you'll see here. Uh, one second. Oh, I already got it, actually. Thank you. So like I said, a little bit of surgery. Just bear with me here. <laughs> wow, it's readable. That's awesome. OK. So, and this, wow, this works too. Okay, so basically I'm gonna kinda do two things at once. Um, demos involving VMs tend to be a little bit sluggish, so I'm just gonna kinda start things up and then in the, in the background I'll explain to you what's actually happening. Great. Okay, so this is a typical like bare bones zookeeper configuration. And the important parts here are down at the bottom. Oh, I have a laser pointer too. Top button. Ah, cool. Uh, okay, so these are the parts I want you to focus on right here. So when you set up a Zookeeper Ensemble, you need to identify all of the members of the quorum. And this is important for, for most uh, consensus-driven systems um, that use something like Paxos or Raft. Uh, that you kind of need to call out all the members first. And when you're writing a, a configuration management system, this can be a little bit complicated in the case of specifically systems like this. And what I want to focus on is these IP addresses. So uh, in the case of ZooKeeper, you have to call out the IPs of the members first, or host names, and uh, also the IDs of them. So this is a little bit tricky uh, because not only do you need to pre-declare what all of these members are, but you basically have a non-uniform configuration. So this can often be a little bit tricky. So what I'm going to show here is just kind of how InfraKit manages this, uh, this sort of pets paradigm. Uh, and you'll note here that basically these IDs map with these. And uh, I'll show you a little bit of how that works behind the scenes. 
And so this is the, uh, the InfraKit configuration that I'm going to be demonstrating. Um, this is pretty similar to what you saw just a minute ago in, in David's slides. And what I've got here is I'm configuring an instance plugin. Uh, and in this case, I'm using the Vagrant plugin. So this is why I'm waiting for VMs to boot up. Um, and this is, if you've used Vagrant before, you might understand what a box is. But this is basically the machine image. And uh, the flavor is Zookeeper. And the details down here that are important, I've got member type. Um, and that doesn't really do anything right now. But it's kind of to call out that you could technically have a flavor that is sort of uh, dynamically changed based on the type of, of, uh, of machine that you want. So in Zookeeper, for example, we, we might have a member and also an observer, which is a different type of node in, uh, in Zookeeper. And then I've got my IPs. So this, uh, you know, these are the same IPs that you saw a minute ago in the, the Zookeeper configuration. And these are basically, this is me defining what, what IPs I want Infricate to create. So to, to drill in a little bit, this is kind of behind the scenes in the Go APIs, what uh, Infricate is, is using to, uh, to parse that configuration. So this is what the, the group looks like. Uh, we basically have the group spec is an instance and flavor, which are these top level keys here. Uh, and then the important detail here is uh, kind of, uh, again, going back to what, what David was talking about, the, the properties of these are all basically abstract JSON. And that's basically by design. Uh, we really want flavor plugins to be able to design schemas that, that are right for them. We don't want to try to dictate in, in, a, in advance all of the schemas that, uh, that might be required. And then uh, this will make sense in a second, but this is basically the structure for what an instance looks like. So these are all the fields that uh, different components of the system have access to. Uh, so here again, we have some abstract JSON. Uh, that's basically what's going to be managed by the, uh, the instance plugin. And then this is like where you start to get a little bit more schema driven, where uh, there's actually some, some fields that have meaning that are passed around to different parts of the system. So if you're implementing a flavor plugin, this is the, the API that you're going to see. Uh, and the interesting one here is the prepare function. And again, this is receiving that, that raw JSON. But you'll notice that it's receiving and returning an instance spec. So this basically allows the flavor plugin to modify any of these fields as it sees fit. And in the case of Zookeeper or, or others, you're probably going to see mostly modification to this init field. Uh, and in, in the case of something like AWS, you can, you can basically map that to user data. So you can be appending to user data on the host. And now this is the, the moment of truth. Yeah, it looks like still no luck. Um, but at any rate, basically what I did in the background was I started a group using that configuration. And I have a script here that uh, would, would hopefully be reporting that all of these ensemble members are up and running, but uh, apparently something went wrong. Uh, but, but at any rate, uh, you can just imagine that you saw a leader and a couple of followers, and everything was great. Thank you. I know. Oh, wait, maybe. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> wow, thanks for that Wi Fi or the Ethernet. That helped. Cool. So that's basically all I have. Um, again, our GitHub repo is docker slash infrakit. Um, there's already issues and pull requests showing up, so feel free to add to that. And uh, you can reach out to David and I, both uh, electronically or here. Uh, anytime throughout the sessions, and we're also going to be doing some birds of feather se sessions tomorrow. Thank you. Yeah, you oh, do you want? Uh, yeah, if you want to do questions, yeah, it looks like we're a little under time, so. Thank you. Um, there are a lot of systems that are trying to do things like this, like uh, Bosch and uh, you know maybe uh, 
things like Poppet and stuff. Why did you decide to create a, a new kit? Yeah, that's a, a really good question. Um, so, so the short answer is some, a lot of these systems can actually be complementary. Um, and you know, as evidenced by the, the plugin that we have right now for Terraform, uh, you can essentially use Terraform as, Terraform as a backend to InfraKit. Um, many of the systems that you'll find for this, such as Puppet and Terraform, um, and I believe Bosch, are not employing active management of any sort. And so that's one of the other big differentiators that we have here is uh, we can actually actively monitor the state of the cluster and converge it towards the desired state. Um, so you'll, mention, you'll notice there's no mention of like whether this is a push or pull system. That's because th that concept doesn't really exist. Um, we're, we're always predefining and dictating what the state of the cluster looks like. Um, so you know it's totally conceivable to implement a, um, a Puppet-based uh, flavor, or sorry, instance plugin. Um, same thing with Bosch. Um, and the nice thing about this is we can now basically take something like InfraKit with Bosch or Terraform or uh, Puppet and actually apply it to different uh, infrastructures, whether it's on-premise or various different clouds. Um, so we think that's a really nice concept um, where you don't have to rely on you know, picking and choosing whether you can use auto-scaling groups or, or um, scale sets, you know, basically different technologies and different uh, infrastructures, which you could do with uh, InfraKit. But basically, you can choose to be pretty uniform from sort of the InfraKit infra level down all the way down to the bare metal on the like a, a cloud, uh, third party cloud provider. I also want to, I also want to add that um, really fundamentally, we're trying to build a toolkit. Um, it's so you can think of it as uh, the fact that you know you have Raft as a library and you can use that to build consensus based systems. Uh, we would like to offer what we have as a toolkit so that um, developers can use that to build new types of active management systems. Um, I think you know, tools exist, exist, existing systems like Bosch, um, Puppet, they're certainly very capable, um, but they're full on. You know, their, their system is in their, own, in their own right. We really are trying to be a part and, and, and the foundation for something else. Uh, I've got a question and a shameless plug. Uh, I'm Gareth from Puppet. Uh, I'm going to hack on InfraKit and Puppet stuff tomorrow. So if anyone else is interested, come see me. But I've got a question as well. Uh, for the JSON format that you're using for configuration, is there a schema? Is there a specification somewhere? Um, I'm thinking about generating things that sort of generate that. Um, and having more like formalization around that would be good. Yeah. So. Um so it, it gets kind of interesting there, and that's something I think we could use some help on. Uh, so we, we have sort of that top level schema, but basically things get abstract at different levels very quickly. So you know, for example, if you're using, you know, I had the, the Vagrant instance plugin, and so it's basically up to that plugin to define its, its piece of that, um, that schema. So you know, if you're trying to put together like a full system using all the plugins, you're going to be kind of merging together at least three schemas um, where they're abstract at different levels. I, that was the problem I was hoping you'd solve. Uh, I've got some ideas I'll, I'll chat to you about. Them. Yeah, I mean, uh, so you. just a quick note on that. Uh, part of our inclination there was we really did not want to uh, require people to do mental mapping between the different concepts of different systems. So like, for example, if you're creating instances on AWS, we don't want to sort of require users to manually map the, uh, the AWS concept of an instance to our, our uh, sort of lens into that, uh, which you'll, you'll see that in a lot of different systems. And um, you know, one of the problems with that is future-proofing, where if we want to support updated schemas that AWS has in their API, uh, we now need to like, sort of add to our mapping. Whereas what, what we've tried to shoot for is, you know, for us, all that really means is um, kind of just updating the dependency and the mapping just sort of expands with the API. As a follow-up question to that, um, how do you handle versioning? Like, uh, for instance, if AWS uh, has a new API, um, 
with new fields, how, how do you how do you handle that? Um, so that's for now. We've kind of just said that's basically up to the the plugins themselves to manage their own version matching uh, and and identification. But I think that is it's a huge issue and something that we're going to have to focus on really soon, especially as we try to go into any form of production. And I want to add to that. I want to add to that. Um, a lot of this stuff also will eventually be deployed as Docker plugins. So we're actually looking to the Docker plugin system in terms of how it manages namespace versioning. Uh, we see we are envisioning different you know, driver interfaces being defined that fits within the, doc, you know, the plugin framework. So that we should definitely chat. Last question. It's not a question, it's a request or asking. Uh, can you show the script that you ran to show the demo? Sure. Please. <laughs> so I have two different scripts that I can show. There's, there's one that was polling the state of the Zookeeper Ensemble and the one that ran. Uh, which one would, well I can show both actually. So the, the purpose of this script is really just to start up the different plugins. Uh, it's not a whole lot other than that. You know, I basically build and run, um, mostly because, you know, as David mentioned, these are all different daemons, so I had to start them all independently. And so the if you've used Zookeeper before, it has this concept of four-letter words. So I'm basically just kind of asking on its status port what the stat was of the, the individual nodes and reporting that or reporting down. Anything else? All right, thank you very much.